Hey, what's up? I'm a hype. See, I play games, make games, and everything between. And today we are checking out Tub Jam by Hamu. Tub Jam is a fun, simple game. It has five different levels. And then afterwards, we can hit the remix button and take a look under the hood to see how it was made. This game was made using Hype Hype, a dope app that lets you make and play games all on your phone, tablet, and even the desktop browser. Kind of like the TikTok of games. I use it to make and play games along with making videos. If you like this kind of content be sure to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more notifications and let's just get to it all right so here we go i love the intro with the camera moving back and forth i'm still trying to learn how to do that and here we just get gotta get the little duckies and get them into the whirlpool love the cool 2d graphics of the whirlpool probably using a simple rotate notice the splash when the duck came into the screen and the cool particles whenever the duck is moving around or getting a little duck. Let's be careful. Okay, we don't want to lose any duckies. And if, if we touch these bombs, they will explode, which is bad for everybody. Okay, oh, get away, get away, little duckies. Okay, I like how they follow me. That's really cool. That's probably using like a follow node. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. We got a couple more levels again a recap of just showing the level with the camera really cool i love that effect and now i'm just kind of going fast and this looks like the same level again so okay okay so now there's a slide which means we can't move once we're on the slide and the duck is basically following my finger. Love the instructions. Oh, and we can see the effects of the slide. And this level was very simple. Having simple levels in the beginning help escalate when you add them to more complicated levels in the future. So here we got to watch out for these sharks. Moving quick. I've done this before. No duckies up there. Okay, where are the little duckies? Let's go. And we got, I think that might be the last one. Whoop, whoop. Let's just double check down here. And we are good to go. Watch out for this dude. Okay. Cool particle effects when the ducky lands in the water. And I also love the shadows. That's one thing great about High Five is very intricate shadow systems. You can move the light source to create whatever shadows you want. Notice that the sharks also have particles when they're swimming and gotta watch out not to get the ducks into the cage. I don't know who's trying to cage little cute ducks, but that's messed up. And we are almost home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's not good. I'll, let's do it again. I'm making it with all the ducks, not just, not just with my favorite. <laughs> okay, okay. Go over here, get this duck. Watch out for the explosion. Maybe go here sooner so we don't have to worry. I think the buttons unlock the gate. Yeah, there we go, unlock with button. Nice instructions. Always. When in doubt, just put text onto your screen for the game. And I lost some ducks again. Okay, let me focus some more. This duck, I think, is the easiest one to get without compromising the other ducks. Gotta hit all these buttons. Get this one, get that one, and okay. Okay, slow down. This is where I mess up. Get these. Love the sharks. It looks so cool. They kind of look like they're walking, actually, if you notice. Let's take a look at the first level. Hit the remix button. Hit logic on. And we can see. Now, I'm curious about the camera movement. Let's follow these red lines, see where they go. Finish area intro. Okay, so this intro 
hit show. We got a couple different components here. We got a broadcaster, which locks the game. And we got a button, transform and translate with the wave generator. You'll see transforms and wave generators together a lot. And that's probably what's moving the camera back and forth. We have a duration in of three seconds, a duration out of three seconds, and the end value of 10. If we change this around to, let's say five, and let's divide these by two, we can hit the play button and see that we changed the camera a little bit. Or if we wanted to make this five and this five with the end value of 15, you can see that's going all the way down five seconds and then stopping. The cool thing here is that there are different tweens that you can use to get the effect that you want. And let's just select some random ones so that we can see how they look differently. And it's just different size wavelengths and how they move. That one was the bounce. When in doubt, Googling the tween you're looking for will show you a wave of how it moves. And that is how the camera will move in the game. So that's really cool to see. This is going to the camera, I believe. Leave it, let's follow and make sure okay if you want to create an effect like that get the transform node target it to the camera attach it to a wave generator and then that wave generator has an output for the transform so it looks like it's mainly these two let's move these up a little bit this amount is coming from the wave generator and then here the wave generator on the value output going into the transform oh and then the executing here we have the executing for the compare before the wave generator it executes causes the transform to execute which is the camera movement there is a check and it checks for camera enabled okay so notice we have multiple camera outputs a button output a wave generator and interval the wave generator we know we understand we were messing with that earlier the camera output we have enabled so this turns the camera movement to off and this one turns the camera movement to on and you can find that out just by clicking the search icon and these are always good to check because you may think it does one thing but it actually does another and we can see both of them have red lines going out meaning they're active but once this one is in Enabled, that one turns off and then this one turns on and the second one is on but it's not being told to turn on it's like if you have a light switch with electricity you can turn the light switch on and it'll work but if you turn the light switch off it still has electricity there's a lot of nuances when it comes to enabling and executing so be sure to practice on understanding the difference we have the button then this button turns off and we can so if we look at the button we can see that the output is off and the execute is also also off just as here the execute is on and the executes are both on the outputs are different so I think that's the button we press at the beginning of the game let's confirm that select the button here it says full screen and we can make that the button uh, invisible so here we hit the button and so now it's this button so if you press anywhere it's not going to cause the game to continue until we tap that button so go ahead and turn it invisible and move the touch area to full screen then this goes to the interval and the interval waits 0.1 second before broadcasting to game start and unlock game we'll dig around a little bit and look for the broadcast listeners for those in a moment and then we also have a sound always good to add sound i forget to do this all the time usually because i'm listening to music and not thinking about the sound but this is a nice polish adding sound to your game in a multitude of places. So let's take a look at this compare all some of these outputs. Okay, so one, I wanna go to this camera and this one was off. Now we're looking at this camera. We have the output off and also execute. Let's see what is going into this camera. It looks like we have an enabled. I believe it's this enabled, but we just can't see it. Oh yeah, there it is. Sometimes you gotta move around in high pipe to get the best picture. I love moving around in 3D. And that's how I know that here, the enabled, we can see that this icon is red. And so what it does is it turns this off. 
that's what that does. So this is the preview. And if we notice, we have multiple cameras. Here is another camera. I don't even know you could have multiple cameras. Now it makes sense because I've played a lot of games in High Pipe and cool ones always have that effect. This is a cool lesson for me because I can go in to my past games and add this kind of effect. This turns that camera off. So this is a preview. Notice that it's labeled. Thanks Hamu for labeling stuff. You don't have to label when you're making a game, but it is super helpful full especially if you want other people to learn from what you've done in your game it does take a lot of time and do the best you can like i said let's get this compare node and now let's go check out this other camera so here we go this is the game camera multiple cameras in a game i think i knew this but i just forgot about it because it seems so complicated i now know that you can have multiple cameras you just have to turn them off and on depending on which one's being used we can see that this camera right now is following the duck target player really easy to do that you just take this and you connect it to the player and now the camera is following and we have it on fixed and there's a difference between keep behind and look at keep behind does this where it kind of tries to figure out the angle that the player is moving and coordinate with that angle but as you can see not great for this gameplay and then look at is this where you can see it but then bye bye so this would be okay for this level but not the other levels so let's keep it at fixed so let's see what else this has got this has got fov field of vision this is a really cool feature to use when you want to change how close the camera is let's go ahead and play with this let's do 25 and we can see i think we're closer let's do more okay we're definitely the same because there's a red arrow let's see where that red arrow is coming from these numbers already have a predetermined value so me changing the number there doesn't matter because this is where we want to change it we have the start value of 55 and the end value of 45 which is what causes that zoom in that's really cool i didn't even know that i'm super glad i'm going through this hype if you like this kind of content be sure to like subscribe and check out my other videos because i love to play games see how they're made and then try to make something myself now we'll change this to 25 and this should have a zoom in let's see that's cool and these are cool polishing effects they're subtle but they help the gameplay stand out i think your average player won't notice this subconsciously they'll notice that this game is smooth and when you're making a game and it's smooth you're on the right track that being said be sure to follow hamu down there his information's below he's amazing great games i always try to get the high score and i think that's something i would add in this game if i were to make a game is i would add a leaderboard here in the camera we got the wave generator super cool and then there is wave generator executing okay so on start this is a broadcast listener on start this just follow the arrow all the way up 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 direction forward i think that's the correct arrow let's take a look do it again right, it's really hard to tell which arrow this one goes to i think it goes to the execute and we have on game fail this camera movement is enabled and this one goes to, let's see if we can follow it. Yeah, they all kind of blend together. I don't think it's going to, oh, maybe it turns off the, well, it wouldn't turn on the enabled. So I think that one is going into direction forward where it turns off the camera movement. Let's see what else we can find. Okay, so these little ducks follow the mama duck. How do they do that? I have no idea. I hope I can figure it out. Uh, let's see, collectible ducks. Here, it looks like we have the inner tube and the duck is just a part of the inner tube. Let's see if we can't select this duck. Selecting the duck is kind of difficult. It makes me think that the duck is a part of the tube because the tube, let's take a look at an advanced, we have collision trigger, collision with group green. Let's select the main duck and we can select advanced object green. So that happens definitely when these two touch. For collision trigger, we got a destroyer. It's just something gets destroyed. Particle effects, vibration, really cool. Sound effects, something gets spawned. We got a broadcaster and an execute. So I think we need to find the original object. Now, if we take a look at this object, it has a green outline. That means it's basically a copy of a main object. And the main object is in a container outside of the world. So let's see if we can't go find that right now. We have 
not a lot of containers here, so let's just let's look at the duckling. Okay, so here is a duckling. It's kind of looking for the, there we go. This is what we want. We want this one. So now if I select the duck here, we can see I can select the duck and it says detach from parent, but let's do select parent and we can see that the tube is the parent. So we select the tube and this little reference object here is what makes it so that we can do all the cool stuff outside of the game onto this duck and then we can just select the container which is this square icon hit duplicate select create new instance and as you can see we have another duck with a green outline let's see what makes this little ducky work now you can put the components inside the object and you can put components outside the object it seems overwhelming but that's a good thing because sometimes you want it more easier to understand. Other times you just want it all in one place and it depends on the nodes that you use. Certain nodes are easier to enable outside of the object. For example, this is a spawner. Notice how the arrow is up. If we selected this duck and we put a spawner inside, spawner, we can see that there is an up arrow, which is great. But sometimes we want the arrows pointing in a different direction. So having the spawner Spawner outside makes sense in some occasions. So let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, so we got the duck. We got the collision. So the spawner. Let's see, what does the spawner spawn? Oh, you know what? It looks like the spawner spawns this little duckling, which is what follows the mama duck. So basically, the duck that we see gets destroyed and a new duck is spawned. And then that duck has the ability to follow the mama duck. Now, before we get into the swimming duck and why is there a blue ball inside the swimming duck, let's keep looking at the duck with the floatable tube. Here we have a wave generator. And if you want to take a look at the components at the container more, you can select the icon at the top, right? And it'll bring you here. I think if you're really advanced and you have some programming knowledge, this might be easier to understand. However, I don't know how to program and I'm a visual person. So looking at at these components from a visual perspective is my preferred method. We have the tube and then we have these effects. We got a spawner, we have a destroyer. The object is destroyed. A cool particle effect happens. Particle effects are here, but where is that particle effect? Like, uh, it's right here. So it's water splash and you can select the particle effects by going to the left-hand menu, hit effects, and we can see what water splash looks like by hitting that play button. And there's an example. A lot of great effects in this hype particles are probably one of my favorite things i think they're easy to start out with but could take a lifetime to master and then we got the swim icon i believe this icon is used both in the ducks and on the enemy sharks making it a multi-faceted tool that helps bring games to life when it comes to swimming in a tub we have an interval and this interval looks like it's coming from the container which i suspect is in the duck because if we hit this hide button everything is all under this white older but i don't see it here so that's a little confusing like where does this go let's go inside i want to look at the wave generator let's move it down here and we can see it's got multiple links it's got a red link to the interval one to the interval and then the other to the transform wave generator is going to transform so that's pretty standard let's follow this gray one because i think maybe that's where everything is coming from in Puts. Okay, so this is just a separate piece that was created in this reusable container. So that just takes some advanced skills, but now we know where it came from. And actually, let me see what turns this on. Okay, so nothing turns this on, but it looks like there's just a bunch of gray links coming out of it to help initialize whatever needs to be turned on. Yeah, and it's going into the interval. I'm still new to high pipe. Some of this goes over my head. Some of it makes sense. And when you're learning how to make games you gotta feel uncomfortable trying new things because that means you're learning i can only do so much my brain hurts sometimes so i take breaks by doing research aka playing games find the method that works best for you when trying to learn and you will be unstoppable
interval, wave generator, transform. We've seen this again. And now this transform is a rotate. You can notice that by the white line going up and down. This little dude gets destroyed and we have a new object that is spawned. And we can see we got the very cool look at feature that is grayed out. This is a super simple node that just causes other objects to look at the main character. And this is how we get the little duckies following the main character, at least looking at the mama duck. Following, let's keep diving in to see if we can't figure out some more. First thing I wanna point out is that there is a blue ball in the yellow duck, or the yellow duck is in the blue ball. The blue ball takes up more of a physical mass than the yellow duck, and then the blue ball itself over here we can see is invisible. This is kind of like a cheat used in a lot of games when you need a bigger collision area than the object that is intended. We can see that the duck is a child of the object. Whenever you're not sure what is attached to what, select the glue button. Love the glue button. I glue a lot of stuff together in High Pipe. It's an easy hack to make something look good. It always depends on the game you're making. From here, we can select parent and we can see that the blue ball is selected. Also notice that the blue ball is a dynamic object, whereas in the little ducky has no physics. This is often the case when you see a bigger object being used as the collision detector. So here we got the stabilizer. Stabilizers are great when you have an object moving, but sometimes it moves a little weird or it shakes. It needs a little bit of finesse. A stabilizer node is a great option. A versatile component that can keep the target object standing up hovering on the ground, rise up after falling over, etc. I've used this in my banana run game. For the most part, it works. Sometimes it's buggy, but that's okay. You know, we're new to making games. Nothing needs to be perfect. We just need to be open to learn and get better. So we got the stabilizer. Again, all these numbers I tend to play around with. We can notice that there are some inputs coming from this node over here. Let's take a look at this one. And this is Raycast. Raycast is Really cool kind of hard to explain i recommend checking out videos on it but basically like an invisible line goes out and is able to detect that there's an object here so it's able to do x y and z and this is probably what is used to find where the mama duck is and then try to follow raycast is a detection component execute raycast to check if there is an object in a line towards raycast direction said line can be seen as white arrow after selecting raycast okay and here we can see that there is a white arrow pointing down we got particle effects we got a destroyer we got a force node force nodes are cool they apply physical force to the physical object we have some grid out nodes these are vector transforms vector transforms are also cool they move the target object to another location over the set duration based on the parameters given okay so somehow this probably detects the location of the mama duck and when it finds out what it is it then tells the baby duck to move to that location but because this is a dynamic gameplay the mama duck is always moving and so this gets updated along the way having the cool following effect that we see in tub jam then we got some broadcasters get score broadcast listeners game success yeah and then we got let's see fan characters let's take a quick look at some of these i'm not sure if i saw this in the game this could be a placeholder for future stuff got a ladder this i think is from a previous game got checkpoints hazards let's see this okay so these has let's move this up hazards are the spikes you can see that the object is red which is usually used for enemy the collision trigger is for green which if you remember is what the mama duck object is so if this happens and these pieces get activated and then there is a game fail a damage player which inevitably causes a game over so we got uh, we got some of the sharks and then we got okay oh i think i was right when i called the shark looks like it was walking and i think it's because it was well maybe it wasn't walking but it was doing a jig that's what it was doing and then these vector transform 
let's grab this and move it down over here. So these vector transforms have input outputs, causing them to move in a specified path. So let's take a look here. We can notice that this is a reference object, particle effect, rigged animation, stand swaying, and then vector transform. Oops. So the vector transform, usually it causes the object to move from A to B. And we can notice that there is a red line over here going to this one. So it looks like this vector transform, it has a little play symbol. So I'm just gonna guess it automatically plays at the beginning, causing the shark to move from location A to B in 0.5 seconds, and then that stops. And then on the first collision, also I noticed that there is a collision group gray here. What I'm trying to find out is, I see why the shark is moving from A to B, but I don't see why the shark is moving from B to A. And I'm trying to get a clearer picture on how that works. Let's turn the logic on. Let's grab one of these the sharks. All these sharks are duplicates of the reference objects. If we select it, you'll notice a green outline. This is really important to become aware of this when messing around in high pipe show so if we select this guy he has a move amount of zero and a speed of three you see there's no collision trigger so now his collision trigger is only this gray so okay that was what we're looking for this object the tub itself is a dark gray so whenever the shark hits that it turns around and continues until it hits the tub again and then turns around so that's how that works that was cool i learned a lot i'll probably watch this video again just so i can get the reference i hope you enjoyed me breaking down and looking into tub jam hamu is a great creator so be sure to check out his games if you have any games on high pipe you'd like me to check out please mention them in the comments below along with any other questions you may have and until next time i'm hypesy stay safe out there and peace.